Okay, so this question has very little to do with circles. Uh, it, it looks like it's about that. We might be tempted to build the equation for it, but it really doesn't matter. It's it's much more about this idea of something being tangent. So um, tangent. So let's draw a quick picture of what this is. So negative uh, four, negative six. Um, I'll just draw a quick x, y plane here. So negative four, negative six, somewhere down here, right? Negative four, negative six. That's the center. And then negative seven, negative seven would just be a little further down. So basically we have a circle. Uh, oh boy, it's going to be lumpy circle, but you get the point, right? So there's my center and there's that point negative seven, negative seven, where it's, it's tangent. So uh, negative four, negative six. Okay. So when we say that another line is tangent to the circle, it's very important to know what that means. It means that it comes at the circle and just kind of glances that point, that spot. It's not passing through the circle and hitting it multiple times. It is just touching the outside edge and moving on. And so, yes, it only touches it once. But important in that is that a tangent line is always going to be perpendicular to the radius at that spot. So if I connect my center to this point, I am forming a right angle. And that's actually really useful in geometry questions, whereas this is more of like an XY plane question because we're on the graph and we have to think about now slopes of lines. But uh, basically that fact is important. If they say something is tangent to a circle, odds are good that you are forming a right angle that you are going to need at some point in the process. And here that's everything because I don't care about the circle. I care about the radius and the line itself and perpendicular lines have to have negative reciprocal slopes. So let's find the slope of the first, the radius, in order to figure out what the perpendicular slope would be. So this, I'm just going to use the normal formula. The slope of a line is y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2. Mike, I thought it was y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Yeah, you learned it a dumb way. That's stupid. One comes before two. It doesn't matter. Just put the number first. That makes the most sense. The point is we stay organized. Whatever point we choose is point one, it's first on the top, first on the bottom. Whatever point we choose is as point two, it's second on the top, second on the bottom. So let's just do it the way it is, right? This is point one. This is point two. So y first, negative six minus negative seven. Keep track of those negatives. Um, and then uh, x is negative four minus negative seven, Okay. So that's now pluses, so negative six plus seven. Negative six plus seven is one. I'm very worried about those negatives. Negative four plus seven, seven minus four is three. So one third is the slope of this uh, radius line, right? So that's, yeah, that's, oh, it's in blue, you see it. Now let's do the slope of this. Well, it has to be the negative reciprocal. What that means is we take that one third and we flip it and we reverse the sign. So negative means now it becomes negative, it was positive, becomes positive, it was negative. And then reciprocal means you flip a fraction upside down. So one third becomes three over one. So that is the slope of line K. So negative three over one is just negative three. So choice A is the answer. So yeah, that took a turn. That that went to a place that I wasn't expecting, but I still consider this a circle question because I think that that's what you're going to think about when you see it at first, but it's not really about that circle equation that we've been using. This ends up being about slopes and, and weird weirder things, but um, still better to think about this as an XY plane question. We're dealing with, um, yeah, as soon as I talk about slope, that's, that's very basic stuff. So if the circle part scared you, hopefully the slope part reassured you that uh, you'd be able to get this right. But we do need to memorize the fact about how perpendicular slopes interact, what their relationship is. And we need to remember what a tangent line is because that kind of tells us in the first place that they're perpendicular. So two facts there you need to memorize. Otherwise, yeah, you'd have no clue what this question is asking.